But uh, I've gotten a ton of questions about this Sue Gunter court naming thing. To be quite honest, I don't really care all that much at all. Um, I've heard about this. I've heard whispers about it. I haven't paid attention to it much at all. But seeing as so many of you have been asking me, I'll give my take on it real quick before we move on to another topic. Uh, I don't know all about the political stuff going on and why exactly it's going on. Political stuff behind the scenes with the governor and all this other crap. I'm sure someone else can explain that to you a hell of a lot better, like Jordy Collada. He could probably explain that to you on his show. Go type in a message on the, uh, the Jordy Collada show, um, 7 to 9 a.m. every morning. Um, I'm sure he's explained it more than I possibly could or better than I possibly could. But I want to talk about the sports aspect of it because that's just kind of who I am. I don't really get into anything else other than just sports. What I'm about to say is probably going to be different and unpopular compared to what most people's opinions are of this Sue Gunter dale Brown court thing. And that's this. Neither Dale Brown or Sue Gunter deserves to have the court named after them at all, whatsoever. I said that from day one. When I, when I think of stadiums, when I think of arenas, when I think of fields or courts that are named after people, coaches or players, they usually, or have to be, at least A, first major person or the first influential person with that team or franchise. Wrigley Field, uh, Alec Box Stadium, um, Fenway Park, you know, uh, they, they were sort of the first influential person uh, for not any specific reason or maybe multitude of reasons, and they name it after them, and then it just becomes a tradition, and so you keep it. I mean, Alec Box wasn't that great of a player from my understanding. I think he was just a good player. But, um, you know, you named it for his what he did off the field. Um, he was a war hero. Uh, Wrigley Field, I don't know who the hell Wrigley was, but they named it after him, and it is what it is. It's tradition. So that's the first part. The second reason why you would name something after somebody, a field, a court, an arena, a stadium, is you're a sponsor of some kind. Look, at the, at the end of the day, Money makes the world go round. The third reason is that you are synonymous, and this is the most important part, is that you are synonymous with that team and that school. You're one and the same. Bryant-Denny Stadium, Bear Bryant is Alabama athletics. Not just Alabama football, he is that university. When you think the University of Alabama, you probably think several things, and one of them, top three, top two at least, is Paul Bear Bryant. Pete Maravich Assembly Center, Everyone knows about Pistol Pete. You don't have to explain that to nobody or nothing. Rupp Arena up in Kentucky. I mean, you, you not know Adolph Rupp? I mean, and plus he deserved it. Maybe the greatest coach ever. Coach K Court up at Duke. Pat Summit Court up in Tennessee. They're so historically great. Players and coaches that are so historically great, there's probably never going to be another one like them their generational type of influence as far as their performance as coaches or as players. Dale Brown and Sue Gunter are neither of those whatsoever. Now, when you go across LSU, and you probably ask current students, who is Dale Brown or Sue Gunter, I guarantee you, see, we live in a sports bubble, so probably you diehard sports fans that went to LSU or currently go to LSU that are listening, you would probably say, well, of course I know. But I guarantee you the general LSU student body would say something like, oh, I've heard the name Dale Brown before, or that seems familiar, or who's Sue Gunter again? That's what they would say. Guarantee you. Unless they're diehards, then they probably don't know. But if you walk around campus and you ask any student body member, any of them, from member of the band, member of the, the, the fine arts department, the science department, math, business administration, manship. You ask them who Pete Maravich is? Well, of course. You ask, who, who's Shaq? You know who Shaq is? They can probably tell you. Ever heard of Chris Jackson? Maybe less so. Simone Augustus? Oh, guarantee you that. They could give you stories. They could probably even give you stats. You go across college athletics around this country in general. Any general sports fan, hell, just any sports fan, whether it's in college or not, and you say the name LSU basketball, you know what they say? They probably say, oh, Pistol Pete Maravich, 44 points per game, all-time leading scorer, LSU history, all-time leading scorer in NCAA history, crazy stats. 
they probably most likely will say Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, Shaq, LSU basketball. Kids today still know who Pistol Pete is. That's why they named the, the arena after him. Hell, diehard NBA fans coast to coast will probably also bring up Bob Pettit and Mahmoud abdul Rauf, formerly Chris Jackson. Y'all, I'm 28 years old, and me and my teammates in the late 2000s, 2009, 2008, 2010, we were looking up Pete Maravich highlights and famous Pete Maravich practice drills on YouTube. The video cassettes that all, the, all everyone had in the 80s and 90s, we were looking those up in the 2000s to early 2010s as well. Hasn't gone away. And let me say this. Dale Brown led LSU to two Final Fours, and the day he retired, he had the second most SEC wins in men's basketball behind Adolph Rupp when he retired. I get it. That's great. His accomplishments are not worthy to name a court after. And Sue Gunner isn't for damn sure either. Now, some of you are going to say, well, Nick, you're too young to remember. You just don't know the history. Oh, bullshit. I love LSU history. And of course, I don't remember, and I, but I consider myself a historian about this kind of stuff. One, it's because it's my job, and two, just because I'm really interested, and I love history, and I especially love LSU history. But I, when you say you're too young to remember, or you weren't alive to remember that stuff, you're right. And guess what? I consider that a privilege not to remember. Because I'm not being lied to by nostalgia. See, there was a controversial opinion at the time when um, Rudy Macklin's jersey got retired in the rafters. There were a lot of people, and quite honestly, I kind of remember agreeing with them to some extent, is Rudy Macklin doesn't deserve his jersey retired at LSU. Not his number, his jersey specifically. Because how, how is Rudy Macklin next to Bob Pettit, Pete Maravich, and at the, at the time, Shaquille O'Neal, and that was it. One is not like the other. But if you ask people my parents' age who were in junior high, high school, when Rudy Macklin was playing, well, at the time, LSU football had just fired um, or gotten rid of um, or retired, however term you want to use. Charlie Mack with football. Skip Bertman in baseball, you know, hadn't showed up yet. So football was down. Baseball was still irrelevant at that time. So basketball, that was, you know, the, the thing to make you feel good. And Rudy Macklin, to my parents' generation especially, Rudy Macklin was God to them. But when you put the accomplishments next to, historically, what Bob Pettit meant for basketball, what Pete Maravich especially, Shaq, meant for basketball, they're not the same. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you don't have to retire his uh, jersey. I think he deserves to have his jersey retired considering what he accomplished at LSU. But I understood the argument because people of a certain generation were being lied to by nostalgia about, was he really the greatest thing since sliced bread? No, he wasn't the greatest thing since sliced bread. He was a very good college basketball player, but not to the level as those other people. It wasn't nostalgia lying to them. And I'll tell you something else. When it comes to Dale Brown and uh, all this stuff about naming stuff after him and all this other stuff, look, Nobody ever bothered to name shit after Paul Dietzel for football. And he's way more accomplished in a shorter amount of time of what he did for LSU football than what Dale Brown did for LSU basketball. And I also I also get that Dale Brown did so much for the community here in Baton Rouge and Louisiana. Okay? I hear that all the time. Well, it's more than just about basketball. I get that. That's awesome. He did awesome things for the community. And I'm glad that Dale Brown did that for my hometown, my state, my alma mater. And I'm so glad he was LSU's basketball coach. Very, very happy for that. That has nothing to do with his basketball accomplishments on the court. That's what this is about. If every humanitarian got something accomplished... Uh, when it comes to you know uh, playing a sport and also being man of the year, woman of the year, when it comes to off the field philanthropy, there'd be a hell of a lot more people's jerseys retired up in the rafters. I have higher standards for naming uh, things after somebody. I have higher standards, quite honestly, for statues. Th- starting to think we have a little bit too many of them here at LSU. Building a statue, retiring a number, I have higher standards. I can appreciate Dale Brown was with LSU's coach, and I can appreciate what Sue Gunter did for the women's program, and more importantly, recruiting Simone Augustus, who definitely deserves to have her name up in the rafters and have a uh, jersey retired and statue and all that stuff. But 
Give Sue Gunter a banner. She still has one, by the way. Dale Brown, same thing. I just, I was never a fan of naming a damn thing after Dale or Sue. Not because of politics, which I still don't really understand what's going on with that, um, but because what they did while they were great, not great enough for my standards. That's just me. Take it or leave it. But whatever. LSU's going to do whatever they're going to do, and um, there are bigger issues in the world than somebody saying, well, it should be named this, not that. Is what it is.